The young lad's mother almost purrs with gladness as she goes on about her teenage son. I'm not by nature boastful, not like some, who drag me to the ragged edge of madness with compound interest bragging for awards their brainy children win. I'm not that way. I would be if, oh well, his... Teachers say he's very brilliant underneath his bored demeanor. Oh, but shush now, here he comes to read the poem he wrote. I swear I've never seen him focus so. We'll see my clever boy can do like other mother's sons. The gathered group grows silent and awaits the nascent brilliance she anticipates. Her slacker son holds folded sheets. He spreads them flat before these pilgrims on a mission to behold the relic of a holy vision in a sacred space. He reads this text. Perplexed, his mother gasps. Perplexed is grand. The boy, dismayed, stares out from where he stands. Her zipping gesture guarantees that from then son may trust that mother shall be mum. Perplexed. The soldiers hounding Rebel David see their dread lord walk away. They wait. The king shall shed his royal ashes high above and far away. They wonder why he makes his privy in a cavern. Field is fine enough for any warrior's fecal doings. None among his fighters, not his most ferocious Loyal men who fought beside him from the start has ever seen the king's arse. Even so, none doubt that he does own one. Why so secret then? Their liege leaves bodyguard behind him to be soon where bats alone can watch him drop a deuce. The potency of words is proved by worlds that turn, or don't, on phrases held or hurled. Two micro-weather systems in one zone collide in earshot of the youthful poem. The bright-eyed poet, blithe, naive, and crude, meets his mother's sudden arctic mood. His sprightly halo sheds a balmy light. Her vacuum spreads with movie monster might. Above the army on the plain, a cave holds ruthless watching men, the renegade their chief, by gesture orders all, withdraw into the darkness, and be still, King Saul 
enfolded with his men, is strong and violent. Safety lies alone in stealth and silence. Well, this is fine, the mother mutters, hopeful, till her boy doles out chagrin by bowlful. But lo, the silhouette of Saul appears against the sunlit cavern maw. He nears young David's muted host, an easy spear toss. Then he hoists his robe and squats. The wind wafts fetid air to secret gagging men, confirming what their eyes already know. A steamy pile of royal deuces grows. The tortured swooning outlaws later swear Saul's rectum woofs and rumbles like a bear. The young lad's mother's face is hard and grim, but near her someone snarfs into his gin. The cavern bandits aren't alone in reeling. In vast numbers, bats are dropping from the ceiling. Do little creatures faint in evil air? Does violent stench make tiny hearts despair? The mother snatches, hoists, and downs a drink. The glass belongs to someone else, I think. With strong resolve, a trembling David crawls with naked knife in hand towards Saul to sharply poke the royal rear, his plan to end the suffering of his woozy band of souls. The king must swiftly flee in fear that stinging insects gather here. Alas, as David nears his august sovereigns, but an unpredicted gust of regal gas erupts from humming Saul's majestic gut. Around the king, a ring of odor, thick and wicked strong, protects him from the nick. Stymied David slices from the cloth of King Saul's splendid flowing robe a swatch. The king stands up and leaves his regal loaf. Behind him, gasping outcasts, faces ghost-like, stagger into fresh air. David calls when he collects his breath. Too far off Saul, O king! He holds the captured fabric high. Turning, Saul perceives he might have died. Grants his ragged quarry, mean postponement, for King Saul grasps the meaning of that moment. The king to be, for now a mere survivor, begs his regent, please, to eat more fiber. They claim that all that goes up must come down, and what is from the earth manures the ground. The meat that vectors in on silver tines will be the food of happy flies in time. 
the cosmic scheme ordains a king shall be a royal fertilizer factory. The youth now bows and basks beneath applause. The mother's tablemate purrs, very nice, a yeoman's job, okay, a little raw. He halts. Her laser eyes would make him ice that holds its frozen state till summer thaw. Dear porcupine, I end with brevity, eternal truths might lounge in levity.